Good morning and welcome to our Sunday worship. We just have me leading the service today. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us now. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship him together. Our prayer for today. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness. Increase your grace within us. Thank our, that our thankfulness may grow. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We take a moment to reflect on the last week or whatever period of time we wish to do so. To think of those things in our lives that we know are not of God. The things that we have those niggling feelings about that we really shouldn't have said or thought or done. We take that moment now. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in your goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, beginning at verse 9. Marks of the true Christian. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honour. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. By doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 21. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus foretells his death and resurrection. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it! This must never happen to you! But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan! You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? For what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord, I pray that I may speak in a way that is faithful to your word, and that you will lay upon our hearts the message you have for each of us now. Amen. For many, many years, I rode horses in any spare moment that I could. And one of the regular features in my life, therefore, was a mounting block. Of course, they were usually stone in those days, given that I'm so old, a great solid structure in every stable yard. Their purpose being to lift you up so that you may mount your horse and gain the freedom of riding. Thoughts of rocks and stones seem to have been buzzing about my head this week. Last week, when Adrienne was speaking to us, I was drawn into yet again that image of Christians as living stones. Stones because we are steadfast and faithful. Living because we are constantly looking for Christ to be at work in us, changing us, moulding us, to be more like him. Then this week in our Gospel reading, we continue with the stony imagery. Peter, the rock upon which the church is to be built, has become a stumbling block, which threatens to uh, obstruct Jesus' mission. The great founder of our church, the one who Jesus tasks with being the mountain block through which others are lifted up to see Christ, has turned into a barrier for Christ's mission. How can that be? He is such a great man of faith. What has caused this fall? Instead of listening to God, for which he was commended in our story from last week, he has given priority this time to his ideas about how God should conduct his business. Listen to what Jesus says to him. 
You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Indeed, Jesus goes so far as to use that powerful and probably quite familiar phrase, those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Jesus isn't just speaking about dying for him. He's speaking of our tendency to hold on to, or even to think that we deserve, a life that is on our terms, rather than following God's way. And when our life is self-centred and not God-centred, we deny ourselves the fullness of God's blessings. Those who want to save their life will lose it. What we are each called to is a lifetime of giving Christ sovereignty over our life. Our challenge then, as individuals and as a church family, is to set our minds on divine things. To live life in such a way that we are a mountain block from which others gain freedom not simply the freedom of being on horseback, wonderful though that is, but perfect, eternal freedom to be found only in Christ. But beware, it is all too easy for any of us at any time to become a stumbling block, just as Peter did in that moment. In a couple of weeks, we will gradually start to reopen for public worship in our building. As a PCC, that's the Parochial Church Council, we have had to consider God's will for us in this different landscape in which we now find ourselves. Life is not the same, and we, as a church, are facing a different future than we were even just six months ago. How do we ensure that St Mary's is a mountain block and not a stumbling block? Our future holds many challenges, but it's also full of opportunities. As a PCC, we sought God's guidance to see those opportunities and to respond to them. What God is saying to us is not exactly the same as he was saying six months ago, even though of course his mission is still the same. Jesus was clear in the final commission that he gave to us. He wants us, as our priority, to go and make disciples. With the experience of church in lockdown, we know that we need to do things differently if we are to find our life as a church in this new world. Whenever our view of life or of church is about what we want for ourselves, then we are failing to lift our minds to divine things. And we are failing in Jesus' commission to us. I found it particularly challenging this week to replace the word life with the word church. Those who want to save their church will lose it, and those who lose their church will find it. Will lose their church for Jesus' sake will find it. I understand what Jesus is saying, and that's the important bit. It is wonderful to see among the responses to our recent survey a number which have clearly been written primarily with others in mind. Written with divine rather than human priorities, and a willingness for the church to be focused on making disciples more than on meeting their personal preferences. As we begin to return to church, the PCC has been juggling the differing views and concerns, the human things, 
whilst trying to keep our mind on the divine things. This unprecedented situation requires us to work this out in very practical ways. To consider how best to enable the worship, both of those who have been regulars for a very long time and those that are newer, and both those who are ready to return to services in our church building, and others who prefer not to do so yet, or indeed because of their own circumstances, may never join us in our building and yet are part of our worshiping community. So in a nutshell, and there is a lot more information to follow, I'll tell you a bit more about that a bit later, but you will all get information from me about our plans, but this is it in a nutshell. We are going to be moving towards having three services in church on a Sunday morning, two communion services and a non-Eucharistic, usually something like morning worship, morning praise, but sometimes the more traditional morning prayer. This format will also help us with the capacity restrictions that we have in our building that we expect to last for really quite some time. To this end, we will be gradually reopening our church building for public worship from Sunday the 13th of September. Initially, just for the 8 o'clock Holy Communion service. That's so that we can make sure that all of these extremely detailed plans that we have made actually work in practice, because until we do that, we really just don't know. We're doing our best to work it out, but of course, it's quite possible we will have got some things a little wrong. So we're going to do that for a couple of weeks, and then we will start increasing the services. We will keep our online services going too gradually increasing our services so that by the end of September we will have a much wider offer of worship opportunities every week. And our midweek Holy Communion service in church will resume on the 16th of September and our midweek online and phoning night prayer will also continue. The PCC appreciates that this means some changes. And for some people, some of those changes won't be popular or won't be what they would have chosen for their church. But we hope that ultimately, it will ensure our church will be a mountain block from which others may step onto the freedom of discipleship, knowing our Lord Jesus Christ as their Saviour. Amen. Let us declare our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn to pray for the needs of the world and all people. Loving God, we come to you now with our prayers and petitions, recognising our responsibility to encourage 
and uphold one another in love, and care for the needs of all your children. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we pray for your church worldwide. Inspire us and teach us through your word and actions as we reach out to those in need in our communities and in our world. Guide us and challenge us that we may make disciples of others and bring glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for our world leaders, our national and community leaders, and those in public office dealing with the challenges of our modern world, the competing priorities and demands which they need to navigate. We pray especially for those making decisions about how to handle the ongoing pandemic alongside issues of poverty and injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for the children and young people who are preparing to return to school, colleges and universities. We especially pray that all places of education will find ways of making teaching and learning safe as well as effective and fun in such strange and difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all who are ill, isolated or housebound. Those in care homes, hospitals or rehabilitation centres. We thank you for our health and social care providers, our emergency services and for all those working within them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all those mourning loved ones or waiting with those who are close to death. Help us to support them in their time of need and to pray diligently for them to know the hope and peace of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Steadfast God, we pray that in a world that so often seeks the negative, to blame and to admonish, we may be people who walk in and share the light. Transform the darkness and selfishness that so often determines our actions and equip us to serve you faithfully and selflessly throughout our lives. May we hold fast to what is good and ever seek to bring your goodness into the lives of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So our notices for today, um, there was a, an error I'm afraid in 
state next year to the next food bank collection is Monday the 7th of September in the afternoon at the usual time between 2 and 3.30. Uh, please do remember you can drop things off before then at any point and pop them in the box in the rectory porch. The big news this week is of course that we are, as I said in my talk, reopening starting with 8 o'clock service only on Sunday the 13th of September and that will be the pattern for two weeks and will continue with the 10 o'clock live streamed as it is. Thereafter, by the end of September, um, we should have established the whole revised pattern of services, which will be two services of Holy Communion at 1 at 8 o'clock and 1 at 9.30 and one service of morning worship, live streamed at 11.15am. We may well keep that live streamed just for a few weeks once we've established the other two services in church, but then that will be a service that people can also join in church. So there will be three services in church and a phone-in service and one service that is live streamed. So in effect, five choices for worship on a Sunday morning. We will also resume, as I said, our midweek Holy Communion services, which will stay at exactly the same time, 9.30, and they will restart on the 16th of September. And some of you may like to consider coming to that one um, rather than the Sunday. Uh, we would encourage you, if you are able to do so, to consider doing that, because it will mean that more people can get to the, the service that they want. Um, we will continue, as I said, with our live stream and phone in uh, services for night prayer during the week. Anyone for whom we have an address will receive a letter outlining the details in full. Um, I'll apologise now that it's a lengthy letter explaining both our reasoning and also telling you how church will be and what you can expect when you come to church because obviously there are lots of things that will be different and our safety of us all really does depend on us all following um, the, the guidance that, that will be sent to you. We will be putting in place a mechanism for booking services which will help us manage capacity and ensure that church is open to everyone. Uh, we are still just finalising a little bit of that, so we can't send the letter out until we've finalised it. But I can tell you that many, 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 many hours have gone into trying to work out a system that will ensure fair access to everybody and that nobody will be uh, disadvantaged. Uh, but also a system that does mean that we can be open to, um, to new people as well. So it's quite complicated trying to work out. So hopefully you will get that information and we will make it as simple as we possibly can. I have to say, and I am still a little surprised by how many people uh, within the church community have not completed a keep in touch form. And if you haven't done that, then it may well be that we don't have your address. We're not going to use your address unless you've completed one of those forms. So when you come back to church, we will be encouraging you to do so if you haven't done so already. But if you don't get a letter from us, that may well be why. But we will be issuing details um, and making that letter available through Stay Connected and on our website. And if anybody finds that if by this time next week you haven't had a letter from us, then please do feel free just to give me a ring and I'll make sure that we've been able to send one out to you. I'm on to any other notices. The other notices are all pretty much as they usually are, but I think I've talked enough today. And so, just coming to our final prayer. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. May Christ draw you to humility and worship and bring you to see God at work. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.
And I just realised one thing I should have said, which was just to remind you that if you are able to join us for coffee afterwards, the link is on um, the Facebook feed. Bye-bye.